I used to be a Mormon and I went through the secret Mormon temple ceremonies. I am choosing to speak out about my experience and talk about exactly what happens during those ceremonies. If you wanna know why I'm talking about it, I talked about that more in depth in the previous video, but in short, I care about informed consent, which I did not have before I went through the temple. If you are a Mormon and watching this would make you feel uncomfortable, upset, or offended in any way, now is your opportunity to not watch the rest of the video, scroll past, or go ahead and block me. There are multiple rituals and ceremonies that take place inside of the temple. In the previous video, we talked about the initiatory, which is like the prerequisite to going through the endowment ceremony, which is what we're talking about today. I do want to point out that at this point, it has been years since I've been through the temple. And the ceremonies change seemingly quite often these days. Things may be slightly different now. I'm going to tell you what I remember, as well as notes I've taken while looking online to remember exact wording and things like that. When I went through the temple, the endowment ceremony was like three hours long. It has since been shortened. I'm not sure exactly how long it is now, but that's part of the reason that there's going to be multiple parts because there is so much to cover. I'll try to go as quick as I can. So the purpose of the endowment, the ceremony is a requirement for salvation, marriage, and any higher leadership in the church. Basically, nobody can make it to the highest level of heaven without going through this ceremony. If you don't or you're unable to or whatever, Mormons will do the ceremony for you by proxy after you've died. And according to their beliefs, at that point in the afterlife, you can choose to accept or reject it. During this ceremony, Mormons make promises to God in a very complicated and repetitive ceremony that was heavily borrowed from the Freemasons by Joseph Smith. As a Mormon, I believed that I would basically have to do this ritual at the gates of heaven in order to be let in. As we talked about before, talking about the temple ceremony for Mormons is very taboo. The ceremony is very secretive. Nobody knows about it until they actually go through the temple. Finding out about it or somebody telling you about it before you go through would be a huge no-no. It is basically considered so sacred that it has to be kept a secret. Like I said, I'm in favor of informed consent, so I'm very against that. So let's begin. In part one, we talked about the initiatory. After the initiatory, you put on your white suit if you're a man or your white dress if you're a woman. Everybody who is participating in the ceremony goes into a room that can seat usually between like 20 and 100 people depending on the size of the temple and the size of the room. Men sit on the right, women sit on the left. Here is an example of what that room might look like. The chairs on each side as well as the altar in the room and the curtain at the back. Here's another one from a different angle. You have now entered the Garden of Eden. Before the ceremony starts, and this is important, before it starts, they say this, if you proceed and receive your full endowment, you will be required to take upon yourselves sacred obligations, the violation of which will bring upon you the judgment of God, for God will not be mocked. If any of you desire to withdraw rather than accept these obligations of your own free will and choice, you may now make it known by raising your hand. So before you know anything that's going to happen, you can leave. You don't know what's about to happen before you make this choice. Also keep in mind, most Mormons are usually going through this ceremony with their parents, with their grandparents, with their fiance, if they're about to get married, with their siblings, etc. In all the ceremonies I ever personally attended, no one ever backed out. If I had backed out during my first ceremony, it would have been in front of my fiance. I was about to get married in two days and we would have had to call off the wedding at that point. My parents, my grandparents, and my future in-laws. It's really not as easy as just saying, nah, I'm not ready. There is immense pressure to go through. I feel like I have to say that because yes, you have a choice and yes, they give you a chance to leave, but no one does and it's not that simple. So if you don't leave, which no one does, you start watching a movie starring Adam, Eve, Jehovah, who is Jesus, Elohim, who is God, and Lucifer, who is Satan. The movie goes over the six days of creation, Adam and Eve are created, and Eve causes the fall of man by eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And at this point, the participants of the ceremony put on a fig leaf decorated green apron. Here is an example of what those fig leaf aprons look like on women and on men. So everybody who is participating in the ceremony comes in with this little bag that has your fig leaf apron, your robes, your hat. Um, and as the ceremony goes on, you're taking things out and putting them on or moving them around, as you'll see later. My mom assembled my little bag for me, so I didn't see the secret clothing before this. The apron is worn to symbolize the fig leaves used to cover Adam and Eve's shame of nakedness in the Garden of Eden. Now at this point, you're given the law of obedience. Women would covenant, you will each observe and keep the law of the Lord and obey your husband as he hearkens to the counsel of the father. As far as I know, 
the wording of this was softened in 1990 and has again been softened probably once or twice since. I believe that women no longer have to covenant to obey their husband, but if you've been through recently and it's different, let me know. Men covenant, you will obey the law of God and keep his commandments. By the way, when you're making each of these covenants I'm gonna tell you about, participants would bring their right arm to the square and bow their head and say yes each time. Now you would be given the law of sacrifice. You covenant to sacrifice all that we possess, even our own lives if necessary, in sustaining and defending the kingdom of God. Now we're gonna go over the tokens. I've talked about this before. These are the secret handshakes that you learn to get into heaven. For each of these, there is a token, a name, and a sign. And before 1990, they all were associated with a penalty as well. Like we've talked about, the temple ceremony has changed over the years. The penalties were taken out in 1990, but I think they're still important to talk about. Here is the first one, the first token of the Aaronic Priesthood. This is the token, both thumbs over the first knuckle. The name is the secret name that you just received when you went through your initiatory. Mine was Leah. So the name of this token for me is Leah. And the sign is putting your right arm to the square with your fingers together and your thumb extended. The penalty, which again went from 1840 to 1990 and then they took them out. But the penalty for this was to place your right hand under the left ear, palm down and draw the thumb quickly across the throat to your right ear. And you would say, my throat be cut from ear to ear and my tongue torn out by its roots. Again, these are the penalties for not keeping the covenant. Now we're entering the telestial kingdom. So the video continues with Adam and Eve trying to find God on this earth. And by the way, the ceremony has been around since the 1840s. And obviously before there were movies, there was no temple movie, but the temple workers would reenact what happens in the movie live, almost like an interactive play. I believe they were still doing that up until very recently in like the Salt Lake Temple. Maybe they are still doing it, I'm not sure. But anyway, Lucifer says he is the God of this earth. And then the apostles, Peter, James, and John appear and intervene and give Adam and Eve the law of the gospel. And a couple from the audience of participants at this point basically cosplays as Adam and Eve at an altar in the room, that right there. And now you would put on the robes of the holy priesthood, which is the full getup that you see right here. I always got confused on the clothing parts because there was so much switching around going on and I could never remember what was coming up next. So I'm actually gonna read exactly what happens. We are instructed to clothe you in the robes of the holy priesthood, place the robe on your left shoulder, place the cap on your head with the bow over the right ear, replace the apron, tie the girdle with the bow on the right side, remove the slippers from your feet and put them in again as part of the temple clothing. So you'd get out your little baggie and do all of that. So you put on the robes, that couple that is cosplaying Adam and Eve comes up and you are given the law of the gospel. You covenant to avoid all light-mindedness, loud laughter, evil speaking of the Lord's anointed, the taking of the name of God in vain, and every other unholy and impure practice. At this point, you're given the second token of the Aaronic Priesthood, pictured here, both thumbs between the first and second knuckles. The name is whatever your first name is. So for me, it was Alexis. The sign is your right hand in front of you in cupping shape and your left arm to the square. The penalty is place the right hand on the left breast and draw quickly across the body. My breasts be torn open, my heart and vitals torn out and given to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Something I forgot to mention is that as you're learning these handshakes and as you're making these covenants, you make the covenants together. Like I said, you bring your right arm to the square and you bow your head and say yes. But getting the token, there's an officiator that comes by and does the handshake with each person. At this point, I'm almost out of time, so I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna have to do a part two for the second half of the endowment ceremony. I'm gonna film it right away, so I will post it shortly.